brother. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 I'm thankful that we finally found it. Amen. We, uh, I, I can, I can really say that I was lost, but now I'm found. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We've been lost, and we're here now. Praise Amen. the Lord. I was wondering if we were ever going to get here. Amen. Lord, Amen. have mercy. The devil run a man around in circles trying to do the will of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that my friend, Brother Price, came with me tonight. Amen. I want to invite him to come and maybe play the keyboard and sing a song for us, if he will. Amen. It'll right. be a blessing to you. We love and appreciate them price so much. Thank you, Lord. 
much more qualified and could probably do a better job than me. Tonight's my night, praise the Lord. And I feel like I have direction from heaven for this church, for the people of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Daniel chapter number one, we're going to read a rather lengthy portion of scripture, but we're going to read verses one through 16. Your Bible says in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and Jerusalem, and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, the king's seed of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge and understanding science, yeah. and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. The king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years. At the end thereof, they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, uh -huh. unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, Come on. nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested the prince of the eunuchs he might not defile himself. Right. Right. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. The prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sword? Then shall you make me in danger, my head, to the king. Uh -huh. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days. Yeah. Let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Yeah. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee. The countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, as thou seest, deal with thy servants. Uh -huh. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. At the end of the ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. Amen. I want to preach to you this evening. Some things are just non-negotiable. All right. Amen. Some things are just non-negotiable. That's right. Come on, Lord, I love you tonight. I thank you and I praise you and I appreciate you for the opportunity to be here. God, I ask you to bless us. I ask you to anoint us. I ask you to help us to be sensitive to the moving of your spirit. Lord Jesus, touch us one and all in this house. Touch our minds, our hearts, and our ears. That we might hear, that we might understand, that we might receive 
what it is that you have for us. God, I pray that not one soul would walk out the door tonight the same way that it came in. Lord, we love you. We appreciate you. We praise you for what you're going to do. We ask all things in the mighty, matchless, holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you'll clap your hands and say amen, you can be seated. Praise the Lord. Sometimes our faith for our stand for truth can become an inconvenience. Uh -huh. Come on. It'll place us in inconvenient situations and can even put us at odds with those around us. Uh -huh. If not, it's time to take a look at our relationship with God. That's That's good. Right. Come on. When the boss man suggests that you lie to keep your job, I submit to you tonight your integrity can become an inconvenience. All right. All right. When the guys at work start telling filthy jokes while you're standing there, your holiness can become an inconvenience. Come on, amen. When the cashier gives you more money back than was due you, your honesty can become an inconvenience. Uh -huh. How we respond to such times will determine the quality of our walk with God. Yeah. Come on. Jesus best describes our state in his prayer in John 17 and 14, when he said, I have given them thy word. Yeah, come on. And the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. That's Somebody right. understand where I'm going. Yeah, They're not of the world, yeah. even as I am. I am not of the world. I submit to you tonight uh, in Ranger, West Virginia, that we are aliens to this world on, because we are not uh, of this world. I know a lot of people are comfortable and a lot of people are sitting up camp in this world and they're not looking and they're not watching and they're not waiting for the coming of the Lord. But I'm telling you, there's a preacher from Charleston, West Virginia, amen, that submits to you tonight that I'm just a pilgrim passing through. I do not feel at home in this world. This world is not my home. I am just a passing through. We're strangers to this world because this world does not understand our values and our worldview. That's right. Come on. That's right, brother. Come on. I read a story one time and it Went a little like this. George Schultz, when he was the Secretary of State during the Reagan administration, he kept a large globe in his office. And when newly appointed ambassadors had an interview with him, and when ambassadors returning from their post for their first visit with him were leaving his office, Mr. Schultz would test them. He would say, you have to go over to the globe and prove to me that you can identify your country. Come on. They would go over, spin the globe, and put their finger on the country to which sent unerringly. When Schultz's old friend and former Senate Majority Leader Mike Mansfield was appointed ambassador to Japan, even he was put to the test. This time, however, Ambassador Mansfield spun the globe, put his hand on the United States, and he said... That's my country. Yes, sir. I said that tonight to say this. We must never forget where our home and our allegiance is. Right. It is not the United States of America, ladies and gentlemen. It is not the great state of West Virginia. But I submit to you tonight that our home is a place called heaven. It's a place we've never been, but we grow homesick even more so day by day. Amen. For that blessed city. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. We are in this world but we are not of this world. Daniel worked in a land that was hostile to the faith that he held. His bosses were some of the most powerful and most ruthless and most egotistical kings in all of ancient history. To contradict these men could mean death. 
But the book of Daniel is a record of the many times Daniel's faith placed him in an inconvenient and uncomfortable circumstance. Where the odds were the highest. It was this atmosphere that Daniel stood firm with a non-negotiable faith. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Daniel knew what it meant to have his faith put him in some inconvenient places. His faith would put him in front of one king that wanted an interpretation of his dream or Daniel's head. His faith would put him in a den of lions. His faith would put him in the middle of one king's wildest party, reading God's judgment for him off the wall. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I feel my help in this house. The three Hebrew children, their faith would put them in a burning, fiery furnace. The book of Daniel teaches us that living with a non-negotiable faith was a matter of seriousness. It was a matter of subtle, small choices. It's not always the big thing that defines who we are. Hallelujah. That's right, brother. Come on. No one would have blamed Daniel for eating the king's food. After all, it was out of his hands. No one would have blamed him for putting his prayer life on hold. On. Faithfulness to this devotion would mean the lion's den. No one would blame the three Hebrew children in chapter 3 of bowing just one time. That's right. Come on, brother. What many believers see as an exception to the rules these faithful men of old saw as a non-negotiable of their faith. It's the, not the big decisions that determine the quality of our faith, but it's the little decisions. Even as young men, Daniel and the three Hebrew children had established non-negotiables in their lives. Non-negotiables are more than just a set of religious beliefs. It's a commitment to risk everything we have, everything we are, everything we hold dear. Non-negotiables refuses to submit to the lie of what I call situation ethics. It holds to truth as absolute and practical in every situation. I don't care where you are, what you're doing, who you're in front of. It's never acceptable and appropriate to, to see it. It's never acceptable to tell a lie. It's never acceptable to use filthy and foul communication. It's never acceptable to go to the hell holes and the honky tonk. It's never acceptable. Come on, feel free, brother. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, brother. It was immediately seen whose authority these Hebrew men's lives were submitted to. Divine law always suspended man's law, yeah. no matter the cost. That's right. Come on. The three Hebrew children refused to bow before anyone but Jehovah. Right. And Daniel refused to stop bowing <laughs> to Jehovah. I would to God we'd get some Christians Woo! in this country today Woo! that would get a backbone about them. I want to God we get some men and women that would take hold of a plow and refuse to look back. I want to God that we get some parents that would tell their children we don't do that. We don't go there. We don't talk like that. We don't act like that. Hallelujah. I want to God that some people who name the name of Christ would actually name his name and depart from iniquity. Hallelujah. We've got too many Christians today that's playing patty cake with Jesus on Sunday morning and living like hell on Monday afternoon. It's not acceptable. We've got to just we've got to establish some things in our lives that's simply non-negotiable. I don't know about you. I don't know how you feel, but I'm not ashamed to be a Christian. I'm not ashamed to be different. I'm not ashamed to be called by the name that's above every name. 
I'm not looking for any new liberty. I'm not looking for any new way. I'm not looking for any new freedom. I found everything that I ever wanted and everything that I ever needed when I met the man Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. In the reign Hallelujah. of the Thank Roman you, Empire where Caesar was proclaimed as Lord, Paul wrote to the Ephesians that Jesus Christ was in Ephesians 1, 21 and 22. He said that Jesus Christ was far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave them to be the head over all things to the church. We need to settle in our hearts tonight that no one will ever hold the power to overrule his authority in our life. To me, uh, if mom doesn't live it, uh, let the church roll on. Uh, if daddy sells out and compromises, uh, let the church roll on. Uh, if wife backslides, uh, if a husband starts going to the hell holes, uh, let the church roll on. Uh, we're not bending. Uh, we're not bowing. Uh, we're not compromising. Uh, we're not giving in. Uh, we're not giving up. Uh, we're going to hold the line. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know why he said that narrow was the way and few there be that find Come it. On. Because the more narrow it gets, the more light from heaven shine on the lives of the church, the fewer there are. Of That's right. Come on, I watch our people, I watch our ministers, I watch our saints, I watch our musicians. And they're looking for an easier way. Uh, they're looking for a way out. Uh, they're on. looking for something that's more comfortable. They're looking for something that's more popular. Uh, they're not willing to set non-negotiables uh, in their life. Uh, but they're willing to look for a place of compromise. And a place that's easier. A place, uh, amen, that's more popular. Come on, brother. The Hebrew children refused to accept the rich diet of the king's table because God had showed them a higher principle to live by. I don't know about you, but God has showed this preacher a higher principle to live by. I don't know about you, but I love this way. I love this good, clean, holy way. I love this separated way. I love this sanctified way. I love this highway of the holiness. I love these old paths. Come on, come on. I don't know about you. I don't need to seek the old paths because I'm still walking in the old path. But we've got a church world. I'm talking about Jesus' name, apostolic tongue talking, one God people, hey man, that's looking for a different way. That's right, amen. It's a happening. Come on. God's raising up men that's digging their heels into the ground. People that's lacing up their boots and putting on their boxing gloves and saying, you bend and bow, but we will not bend. We will not bow. We will not give in. We will not back up. We're going to hold the line. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for your Lord. Hallelujah. The truth you believe is the truth you practice. Amen. I constantly discover believers who have more faith in the perspective of man than in the principles of God. That's right. Come on, brother. Yes, amen. That's the truth. That's right. Amen. We all know people in the business world that think a little lie is okay. 
There's no such thing as a white lie. No. There's no such thing. It's all sin. There's no such thing as a great big sin and a little bitty sin. It's all sin. And sin separates a man from God. That's right. It didn't, it didn't say those that tell big lies will have their part in the lake of fire. It said in all lies. We live in a world where people look out for number one. You do you and I'll do me. We live in a world where people think we win through intimidation. I say thank God for the Daniels in our world that will say God's truth is non-negotiable in my life. I choose to do things God's way. This world may change, but God's truth does not change. The Acts 2.38 message of salvation is non-negotiable. The revelation of the mighty God in Christ is non-negotiable. Our answer to hell, compromisers, and the world is by the truth and sell it not. By the truth and sell it not. By the truth and sell it not. I thought I was going to be about half backslid when I got here, but I feel my help now. Praise the Lord. I said I feel my help now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Feel the good, sweet Holy Ghost. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, brother. A prophet once came to a city to convert its inhabitants. At first, the people listened to his sermons, but they gradually drifted away until there was not a single soul to hear the prophet when he spoke. One day, a traveler said to him, Why do you go on preaching? Come on. Said the prophet, In the beginning, I hope to change these people. Yeah, come on. If I still shout, it's only to prevent them from changing me. I'm going to run when nobody else wants to run. a sold out. Uh, amen. I'm not for sale. I'm not for sale. There's a lot of folks for sale tonight. Uh, everybody seems to have their price. Uh, my God, let some men and women of God stand up uh, and say, I am not uh, for sale. Hallelujah. Our separation from the world. That's right. Through biblical standards uh -huh. yeah. and principles of holiness That's right. Come on. are non-negotiable. That's right. Come on. Hallelujah. I don't care if some fancy, fancy, hip-shaking, charismatic Come comes through and says he kabosha and thus saith the Lord. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if he gets away from the line upon line, uh, and the precept upon precept, uh, you turn him away. Uh, you turn him away. Uh, Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's Come men on. that's coming in His name. Come on. Come on, there's coming men that's naming the name of Christ yes. that's preaching another doctrine. Yes. Yes. Come on. My Bible said uh, that even if an angel Come on. preach anything, then we have preached. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm t I don't care how good they can sing. I don't care how good they can play instruments. I don't care how pretty they can shake their hips. I don't care how nice their suit tie is. I'm telling you, when they say, Thus saith the Lord, you better be sure that God is saying something. Amen. Come on. Were you raised in the church? Or you let some mamby pamby weak need 
limp wristed. Call it Come on. Call it what it is. You, 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 before you listen to one of them fellas uh, and you start tearing down fences uh, that the forefathers have built, uh, you better take it uh, and get to a place of prayer. You better find out uh, just what spirit they're of. Come on. telling you, it's not in the crowd and there's nothing wrong with the large church. Yeah. It's not in the crowd. Right. Uh, amen. God uh, will give us revival. Yes. Uh, amen. With two or three, he said he'd do it. Yes. Uh, he said where two or three uh, are gathered in my name, uh, there I'll be in the midst. Uh, we don't need a large crowd uh, and we don't need a whole lot of talent, uh, but we can't do it without God. Uh, we can't do it without his power. We can't do it without the anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you. I told my pastor a couple of weeks ago, I said, I said, I'm not like some of these guys, Pastor. I said, I'm not going to hobnob and rub shoulders with them. I said, they're trying to tear down fences that I'm trying to rebuild. Come on. Hallelujah. They're trying to tear down things uh, that I'm trying to build back up. Uh, and not only build that, uh, but build more. That's right. Come on. Come on. Come on, brother. That's right. I'm not looking for liberty from this. I am the prisoner of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We will not negotiate with the world to become more acceptable by lowering our holiness lifestyle. Come on, man. I'm going to tell you something. I'm as comfortable talking about holiness and separation as I am talking about water baptism. Come on, amen. I don't get afraid and I don't get scared and I don't feel like running and hiding and I don't feel confused. I'm as comfortable talking about this great holiness message of separation as I am telling you that you must repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can't just feel that fence. No, you can't. Yeah, I heard just a few weeks ago, I was watching a YouTube video or something, and there was a homosexual, young homosexual talking, and he was he was giving an explanation as to how he justifies that it's okay for him to be a Christian and be a homosexual. Oh, my goodness. Guess what the verse was he used? Oh, my goodness. Acts chapter 2, verse 39. For the promise. Come on. Way far off. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's a fence built uh, that Come says on. let them that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If you're going to name the name, if you're going to repent, if you're going to be baptized, if you're going to be filled with the Spirit, you've got to separate from the world. And if God calls it sin, then you begin to hate. That's what God hates. Some, some, some weak-minded, uh, all-inclusive churches uh, that want numbers uh, more than they want a real move of God, uh, they'll tear down the fence uh, and say, come on, come on, I'm telling you, uh, there's only one way to come, uh, and you've got to come through the blood. And in order to get the blood, uh, you've got to go down uh, and repent. Hallelujah. That's right. I feel the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Your precious Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God Almighty. Hallelujah. Daniel proved that his service to God was not for sale. Daniel was a servant to Jehovah first and to the king next. A lot of us has got that backwards. I'll go to church if I get off work on time. Or I'll go to church if... If my if my kids' ball practice is over, and, uh -huh. uh, come on, come on, preach it, brother. That's it. Praise it, brother. the Lord. That's it. Come on, feel free. Come on. That's the truth. I heard the Bible say, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and everything you need. All these other things will be added unto you." You gotta first seek God, and you can't seek God when you're laying out of church on Sunday afternoon and all day. Amen. 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 
if we had a screaming organ, that's the point where it would start screaming. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. God's going to be first. Amen. This modern day church fits God in where they can fit him in. That's right. Come on. I, well, I remember the, the, the preachers that raised me in this. Uh, my father in the gospel and my pastor, uh, amen, he preached that God had to be number one uh, or God wouldn't be nothing at all. Amen. That's right. Come on. God had to be first. Bring it down. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. That's right. Yes. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. We fit God in where it's convenient. Uh -huh. Come on. I'll pray when it's easy to pray. Uh, come on. Come on. Come on. I'll fast when it's easy to fast. Yeah, come on. That's right. Come on. Amen. I'll read my Bible and study the Word of God when I have time. Well, if you wait till you have time, you ain't never going to have time. Amen. Come on. You're like me and the good brother Price uh, going around in circles trying to find our way. Come on, brother. There'll always be another turn. There'll always be another circumstance. There'll always be another voice saying, no, go this way or go that way. Condemned already. You're condemned already. When a man knoweth though to do as good and doeth not, to him it's a sin. You know you need to read your Bible. You know you need to pray. You know you need to fast. Because you can't get the goods. You can't get the power. You can't get the anointing without paying the price. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. That's right. Come on. Bless you, Lord. People come to our churches and they're full of the devil and they need deliverance and we ain't fasting and we ain't praying and we don't have the goods to put the devil on the run. Right. It's an indictment yes, against it is. us. Yes, it is. Come on, brother. Bless Lord. We spend more time on a telephone. Uh -huh. We spend more time on a smartphone and on, 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 on social media. And on, God brother. forbid if you have televisions. Uh, we on. spend more time watching television. And Hollywood, let me tell you something. Uh, Holy Ghost and Hollywood uh, does not coexist. Hey, uh, I said the Holy Ghost uh, and Hollywood uh, does not coexist. You gotta choose one. Uh, To come to a church where you ought to be afraid to preach. Amen. Amen. Preach it, brother. Amen. Preach it, brother. Come on. Hallelujah. I don't care if I gotta go into the sticks uh, to find a place to preach the word of God. Right. Uh, I'll go into the come sticks. On. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, remind me, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's right. Come on. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Daniel refused to even deviate from his devotional schedule to accommodate for the risk he put his life in. That's right. I'm telling you, we don't have what Daniel had. Come on. Daniel didn't even have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Daniel never was baptized in Jesus' name because Jesus' name hadn't even been revealed yet. That's right. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, we got more than anybody in the Old Testament ever had. We got more power, more authority, more anointing. I'm telling you, we've got it. It came from heaven on the day of Pentecost, and it's here. It's, it's not coming. It's not on the way. It's here. And I'm going to tell you while I'm here, I'm going to clear me off a spot, and I'm going to lift my voice real loud and tell you we've not had the best service that we're going to have yet. That's right. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. We've not had the greatest revival that we're going to have yet. Right. It's not happened yet. That's right. It's not. That's right. Come on. Amen. Right, brother. Come on. Thank you. I'm telling you the best is yet to come. That's right. Come on, man. Pentecost is gonna it's gonna dim in value right. when God moves in these last days. Yeah. I'm telling you, he's gonna shake heaven and he's gonna shake earth. And everything that can be shook loose, he's gonna shake it loose. Come on, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's right. I believe that. Come on. Yes, I believe. Doom and doom preachers that want your money 
sends you home satisfied and content on a lie. I'm telling you, we haven't got it yet. We have the ability. We have the goods. We've got it straight from heaven. We've got authority above all other authority, and it's in that name. Amen. Come on. That's right. That's right. Everything that we need uh, is wrapped up, tied up, uh, and tangled up in the name uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe it. Come on. Amen. That's right, bro. God's give us what we need to fight uh, and win. That's right. I'm telling you, it's not God's will uh, for one of His children to be defeated. Right. It's not His will for you to be down. It's not His will for you to be sick and afflicted. It's not His will for you to be busted and disgusted. It's not His will for you to be the tail. It's God's will to lift you up. It's God's will to put your foot on a solid rock. It's God's will to make you the head and not the tail. It's God's will that you be in and not out. It's God's will that you be up and not down. It's God's will that you be blessed and not depressed. It's God's will that you be victorious. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Don't preach at me. Hallelujah. Come on, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless Jesus. Thank you. Where does your service for God fall? Come on. When you have time for it. When your boss is satisfied, your wife is satisfied, your husband's satisfied, your children's satisfied. Come on. When it's convenient. God's looking for men like Daniel yeah. who are sold out. Uh -huh. Ah, we don't like that word. God's looking for men like Daniel who are sold out. God's looking for men like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Come on. You realize when all this was going on, these men, we called them men, but they were actually teenagers. Yes, they were. Amen. That's right. They were teenagers. That's right. Come on. My, my, my. Teenagers aren't made of that same kind of stuff today. You're right. You're right. Come on. We'll see. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We'll see. They don't like to play in the dirt. That's right. Come on. Too soft. Come on. They don't like to get dirty. They don't like to get in the mud. They don't like to get in the muck. They don't like to sweat. They don't actually like a lot of them don't like to go outside. Come on, somebody. Come on, preacher. Come on, somebody. Your Bible teaches us about being effeminate. We've got a bunch of sissy, sissy boys. Amen. That, 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 that don't know what it means to be a man. That's right. Come on, preacher. Amen. God's got a problem with that. Yes, he does. Man needs to be a man. Not not only dress like a man, act like a man. Amen. God expects a woman to do the same. Now, let me tell you something. It's not popular, and I'm not popular, but I'm as old-fashioned as they come. Our, our world, our society, our kids would not be near as messed up as they are if mama was at home teaching them the ways of God. It never was God's plan. It never was God's purpose for mother to leave the home and have to work. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, the apostolic church has got the solution to the problem in the United States of America. Yeah, come on. Bless you, Lord. We get called sexist. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And what is it? Misogynist. Uh -huh. Misogynistic. Yeah. Uh -huh. All these feminists. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, when you get out of the divine order of God, uh, you do nothing but mess up uh, God's perfect will uh, for your life. Uh, that's why the United States of America is messed up. Uh, they perverted the word of God. They perverted the ways of God. They perverted the laws of God. Good. Come on. Hallelujah. Tell us, Lord. Remind us, Jesus. Come on, Lord. 
Well, this Hallelujah. is not popular preaching. Right, son. This is popular. the kind of preaching will get a man put in jail this Come day on. time. Come on. This will get a man red flagged on social media. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, I'll stand for Jesus uh, and let the world know. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. That's all right. Come on. 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 I'll stand for Jesus. Yeah. I'll take what he's got. The only thing you can do is hurt this body. That's right. The only thing you can do is hurt this flesh. Yes. Come on. Oh, but he's the one that can just that can destroy both soul and body. In a place called hell. I'd rather stand for Jesus and be persecuted and hated and mocked and despised and make heaven my home. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 I'm telling you, there's a real presence of the Lord. There's a real divine presence of the Holy Ghost in this house. Praise the Lord. God likes this. You get that. You understand that. God likes this. And he likes it that you like it. I'll come down and walk among those people. Those people like my ways. Those people like my wills. Those people like what I want. I feel the Holy Ghost. I'll come down and walk among them. I work miracles among them. I do signs and wonders among them. I let the gifts of my spirit operate among them. I raise them up. They like what I like. Hallelujah. They need to fall in love with the Word of God. I'm not talking about this watered down, mamby pamby, sissy fied, sugar coated version of it. We need to fall in love with the hell, fire, and brimstone Word of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to fall in love with this thing over and over and over again. Talking about being real. I'm not talking about getting up and saying this uh, and going home and doing something else. Get up and preach about going to the hell holes. Uh, Come on. You're right. You're doing, you're right. And then Wednesday night. Uh, Go to a ball game and commit adultery. Come on, brother. Come on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hello. Hello. Get Hello. up and preach name to name and depart from iniquity uh, and go home and turn on a, a screen uh, yeah. or open the phone uh, and watch everything uh, that God says is abominable. Yeah. Everything that God says I hate. Turn it on and feed it to your spirit. Yeah. Feed it to your soul. Yeah. Feed it to your mind. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. The Bible says that them that loveth and maketh a lie will have their part in the lake. Ladies and gentlemen, Hollywood loves and makes a lot of lies. Amen. Come on. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. My goodness, I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Daniel proved, he proved to us that we can serve God without neglecting our secondary commitments. Yes. Yes. We can Amen. serve God and still have a job. Yes. We can Amen. serve God and still keep our commitments to That's things right. in the secular world right. without compromising right. the truth yes. of the word of the Lord. That's right. Amen. Come on. The three Hebrew children best exemplifies this principle in their statement to the king in Daniel 3, 17 and 18 when they said if it be so our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand O king but if not but if not be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God. 
nor will we worship your golden image which you set up. That's right. Come on, brother. Amen. No matter the consequences, right. their faith still stands as non-negotiable. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Yes. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. You're willing to have a faith that may cost you. It don't cost us anything. We talk about being persecuted in America. We're not persecuted in America. No, we're not. Thank Somebody you. comes to church and doesn't shake your hand and you say you've been persecuted. Come on. Yeah. Come on, brother. Yeah. 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 Come on. Come on. Sister Sally doesn't sing your favorite song. Oh, the whole world's against me. Uh, yeah. Come on, preach. Poor pitiful me. Come on. That's right. Amen. We don't know persecution, folks. Amen. No, we don't. No, we don't. But what's going to happen when we get down to the point where the rubber meets the road That's right. and our faith is going to potentially cost us something? It's what right. Are we going to stand the stay? Are we going to stand the test of time? Or are we going to get weak need? Come on. Is come that on. spirit of compromise going to come on us and say, well, a little bit won't hurt? Come on, brother. Preach it. Come down. on. That's right. God will understand. God will never understand unfaithfulness. God will never understand you breaking your veil and your commitment to Him. God will never understand you bending and bowing and backing up on that which He said should be non negotiable. Amen. That's right, brother. Come on. Thank you, the book's not heaven or hell. And if it's not heaven or hell, fine. Come on. Whatever yes. your pastor sets and says, abide by that. Yes. Right. Yes. Lord. Come on. Amen. We don't like that either. We don't like to submit to authority. Amen. Come Come on. On. It's as apostolic to submit to your pastor as it is to be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on. Right. My pastor is my covering. That's right. My Amen. pastor is my covering. And I need him in my life. I need him praying for me. I need him counseling me. I need him correcting me. I need him reproving and rebuking me. I need my pastor. I need my man of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Moses' faith cost Pharaoh's palace and authority. Cost the apostle Paul his position and reputation as a Pharisee. That's right. Cost Jesus his life. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, we can only stand such a test when we value what we have more than what we've lost. Amen. Amen. Come on, brother. Preach it. That's right. Come on, man. How Jesus you? describes this attitude in the, per, in the parable of the pearl of great price. We'll never effectively serve God until the kingdom of God is worth surrendering everything else in our lives. Right. Daniel and the three Hebrew children valued the God they served more than they did their very lives. Yes, they did. Come on. Daniel had to be a firm believer that the path that he had chosen was the best path. And so must we. That's right. Come on. That's right. Amen. If you doubt in your mind and your heart that this is not the best way, then you need to search out what is the best way. That's right. Come on. Amen. 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 Come on. One of my mentors, when he was sent off to the mission field, I think it was Ethiopia first, wasn't it, Elder? Sent off. He started the very first apostolic Jesus named church in the in, in, in Ethiopia. And when he got there, he ran into some denominal folks. Some good people. Some good godly people that, that he felt like they really loved God, but they didn't have the truth. And it bothered him so much. And he was there trying to toil the land and and, 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 and start a church from scratch. That's, that's, that's something, folks. Yes, it is. Come on. But he got so, so bothered because he was all alone and he wanted to be friends with these guys. He wanted to fellowship with them and blah, blah, blah. And Come on. So he took it upon himself and he said, I got in the word of God for a period of time and I tried to prove what I believe wrong. Come on. Come on. I tried to find a problem with what we preach and teach and believe. Come on. I tried to find yeah. error in our doctrine. Uh -huh. And he said, when I got finished, uh, I believed uh, the message more then uh, than I did when I started. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 That's right. yeah. Hallelujah. If you're looking for a way out, you'll find it. That's right. If you're looking for a wrong turn, you'll find it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, bro. If you're looking for something bigger and better and shinier, you will find it. Uh -huh. Come on. 
Bless him, Lord. Come on. Bless him, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Daniel trusted the path he had chosen. Uh-huh. And it brought blessings to his life. Yes, it did. All that life needs to be for us is wrapped up in one single solitary package. That's right. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right, yeah. Jesus is all the direction that we ever need because he is the way. Yes, he is. He's all the revelation we ever needed because he is the truth. Yes. He's all the fulfillment we've ever needed because he is the life. Amen. Come on. When we truly trust God, I said when we truly trust God. True. Amen. We're willing to put everything into his hands, even our lives. That's right. I'm not just saying that to, to, to make myself look good. I'm not saying that to get a jump and a shout and a hoop and a holler out of you. I'm telling you, I want to get so in love, so enveloped in this thing that if it come down to the point that I have to go to jail or that I have to give up my very life, I don't know that that'll happen. I'm not, I'm, not yeah. trying to, I'm not trying to prophesy, but I want to get to such a place with God that whatever comes, I want to be able to stand the test. Yes, I don't want to be wishy washy. No, sir. Come on. I don't want to be weak kneed. I want to stand for the truth of the Word of God. Amen. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. When we truly trust God, we're willing to put everything into His hands. Come on. Even our lives. Amen. Come on. You can take a stand even when it costs you. If you know without a doubt that God is still in charge and is always going to be in charge. Yes. You may lose friends. You may lose a job. You may lose a position. Yeah. Come on. That's right. You may find yourself in the same place that Job found himself. He lost everything. Uh -huh. One of the most wealthiest men of his time. That's right. Amen. A perfect man. Yeah. Wow, that's a statement. Yes, it is. A perfect man. Perfect man. Hey, devil, have you considered my servant Job? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Come on. Lost everything. Yes. But he didn't lay down in the valley of the shadow. He did not. He might have wallowed a little bit. That's right. He might have boo-hooed a little bit. He might have had a pity party. But ladies and gentlemen, he kept walking. Yes, he did. He kept Move it. Yes, and when he got to the other side of that thing, <laughs> he got more than he had before. That's right. Hallelujah. His friends wanted to throw him in the ditch line. Uh, yeah. Come on. Come on. His friends, yeah. <laughs> his yeah. friends wanted to make him a sinner. Uh, they wanted to make him an unrighteous yeah. man. Come on. They wanted to make him something that he wasn't. Right. Come on, somebody. On. He kept That's walking. Right. Yeah, yeah. He kept walking. Yeah, yeah. Come on. And if we'll keep walking instead of laying down Hallelujah. and giving up, That's right. there's victory at the other end. Yes, they are. There's victory on the other side. I believe that, brother. Amen. Hello? I believe right. that. Would Come you on. stand with me tonight? Amen. Amen. Bless you, Lord. This is our first time here. I don't know how y'all normally end the service. Do what you led to do. Amen. My brother Price might come back and tickle those ivories one more time. Come on. Mind the Lord. Do what you do. Come on. Praise the, the Lord. Amen. Whatever's of God. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. After we preach a message like this, I think a good old-fashioned altar call Amen. is appropriate. Come I think on, a good old-fashioned prayer meeting is appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Come on, brother. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He's still working on me. <laughs> trying to make me what I'll be. <laughs> Took him just a week to make the sun, moon, and stars. Jupiter and Mars. He's still working on me. I want to be what he wants me to be. I don't want to be what the church down the road thinks that I should be. I don't want to be what the church up the road thinks I should be. 
I don't want to be what the deacon board thinks I should be or the elder board thinks I should be, but I want to be what Jesus wants me to be. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house right now. I feel a special touch of the Holy Ghost in this house. I want to be what Jesus wants me to be. I can overcome if I'm what he wants me to be. I can walk in victory if I'm what he wants me to be. I can be the head and not the tail if I'm what he wants me to be. Why don't you find a place to pray for the next little bit? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you need to pray until you talk in tongues. You need to pray until the Holy Ghost prays. Turn the searchlight on me, oh God. Turn the searchlight on me, oh God. Yeah. 
Lord, Lord, we come before you, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to open his ears, Lord. And loose his tongue in the name of Jesus Christ. God, Lord, to be in the name of us. Lord, to touch you, Lord. 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 Lord, to touch you, Lord.